So, I appreciate Pastor, hopefully I can find my notes, allowing me to do this every four years. Tonight I want to bring to you the, the thought of how do I vote. And I understand who I'm preaching to, and I understand that most of you understand what I'm going to say. But I just want to share some things with you. I'm kind of changing my tune a little bit because I really want you to understand that we need to vote biblically. Now, I say that, and we like, yeah, 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 amen. But we need to vote biblically, and we need to vote intelligently. Um, I will not be able to go through all my notes tonight, because I have a copious amount of notes from the last 16 years of preparing this. And I made up little packets. If you want one, I only have 10, so one per family, and I can make you more. But I, I went through, I've spent hours and hours this last cycle just going through every website I could find, everything I could find on every candidate running, from the school board um, I even have things, what do certain things do? Like, okay, you vote for the circuit court judge of appeals outright. What does that mean? Well, I looked it all up, and I wrote it all out for you. So when you go to vote, okay, circuit court appeal, pfft, this guy. So you have an idea of what they do. And I got websites on everybody. I even got their pictures on them. So you, so you know what they look like when you're voting for them. I mean, I hate that. Looking at a ballot, like, okay, Republican, pfft, Republican, pfft. Or Democrat, you ought to know. You ought to have some idea. And when we vote, how I vote is 100% on the Word of God. And I have nine, and I looked up, I found 73 issues that they vote on. And there's a website um, called ProCon from Britannica. It's fantastic on all the major parties. You know, and, and then even from, from our, our congressional election, do you guys know there's a congressional election, right? What, con what congressional district are we? Don't, if you, who knows? Raise your hand. Who does not know? Thank you for your honesty. We're the fifth congressional uh, district. And Steny Hoyer is running against, who can tell me? Who knows? Who, brother guy? Chris Palumbi. A lot of you folks don't even know what that name is. And I've, I've researched Chris Palumbi. He used to be a, a police officer, a Capitol Heights police officer. He's a, he's a lacrosse teacher. And he's, you know, and I read what he stands for. And you know what? He lines up. And I'm not here to promote anybody. But, I mean, most people know who, I, who I'm voting for, who I stand for. But I'm telling you, I'm not voting for a man. I'm voting for where that candidate lines up closest to the word of God. And let me say this. We're not voting for a pastor. And it would be, and I'm jumping, I am not going to stick to my notes at all because I got about 35, 40 minutes or whatever. I might go a little over. I normally don't, but um, we'll see how God leads me. But I want to say this. If in a perfect world, I would love an independent fundamental Baptist to, to be running for president. Wouldn't that be awesome? Brother Tim for president. Okay, let me redo that. Miss Karen for <laughs> But you're not going to get that. But you know, if I, was in, if I was in this church and I had a heart issue and I had to have a quadruple, quadruple surgery, I want an independent fundamental Baptist. But you know, there's only one doctor in this church. Did you know we have a doctor in our church? Dr. Gerald Oreck. Brother Oreck has a doctorate. And who else has a doctorate? Okay, Mrs. Holding. Mrs. Holding, you're going to have to do my heart surgery for me. <laughs> You and Brother Oreck are going to, I'm sorry, I did not realize that. You and Brother Oreck are going to have to, but in a perfect world, right? But I'm sorry, as much as I, I love your families and I love you folks, you're not touching my heart. Down the street, though, there's a Catholic guy, a Catholic Hindu, who's the best heart surgeon in the county, in the world. Guess who's going to operate on my heart? That guy. So we're not going to get the perfect candidate, but we are going to get, some, somebody is going to line up closer to the word of God. And, and a lot of people say, well, I vote for the lesser of two evils. Well, that's kind of dumb. That's not how you vote. You vote according to the Bible. You know, things change. Um, politicians change. Parties change. Uh, party ideals change. Hotbeds and topics change. But the word of God, forever, O oh Lord, thou, thy word is settled in heaven. You know, what was wrong 3,000 years ago when Moses wrote it is still wrong today. I don't care what you call it. I don't care what spin you put on it. All right? You know, four years ago, the, the hotbeds were abortion, um, sodomite marriages. Uh, and by the way, we're, we're not going to use that word abortion anymore. 
We're going to stop using that. I'm going to get to that in a minute. How you value human life. That's, where, that's how we're going to start looking at that. Illegal immigration. Um, and will Donald Trump be elected? That was, and he was. That was the hotbed. And you know, there's a lot of Christians who hated his guts four years ago who don't now. And let me say this, a hundred years ago, the issues were the gold standard, a woman's right to vote. That was actually, that was actually a thing. That was a hotbed. Women shouldn't be voting. And now, man, it's like, of course women vote. Why wouldn't they vote? You know, World War I. And now this year, it's COVID-19, Black Lives Matter, rioting, immigration, uh, illegal immigration. But no matter what the hotbed of politics or the topics are, God's principles always stay the same. God's view of marriage, Brother Tim, is the same today. It was on day one when Adam and Eve came around. God's view on the value of human life will never change. That is how we vote. And now I have young people in here. We have some people voting for the first time. Who's going to be their first time voting this year? Kelly. All right. Amen. Who else? Brennan? Amen. Brother Guy? No, I'm just kidding. I was just messing with the guy. You know what? Do you know why you're going to vote? Or probably are you just going to vote what Dad says, Kelly? If you don't vote, you're going to die. I'm kicking you out of the house. Because eventually you will be out of the house. You will be living on your own. And you better vote biblically. God's view on standards. God's view on history. That's one. That's one of my subjects tonight if I get to it. God's view on chaos and lawlessness and authority. God's view on salvation. God's view on morality. They never change. They never change. If America voted that, could you imagine what we would be? Um, God's view does not change. So there's a lot of things I have written. Um, let me say this. We are, and this is a scary thought if you think about it, if you really think about it. We are... Who thinks we are a democracy? We're not. We are a, a representative democracy. We are a republic. A democracy, you vote individually for that issue or that person or, or that thing. But in, in what we are, we vote for people who make the rules. We vote for people who will make our rules and make our happiness. That's kind of a scary thought. Because people go crazy, or as my daughter says, cray-cray. And, and so it can be quite scary. These people implement your laws. So I want to vote, and, and I watch news, I watch everything. I want to vote for the candidate who lines up closest to the Word of God. That's, that's what I'm going to do. In just a few months, I have seen the decline of the American Republic because of a disease, COVID-19. It hit us so hard and caught us so off guard that people forgot we were Christians. <gasps> I don't know. The governor says we can't go to church. What? Why does that change? What? And I understand health and all that. And look at you guys. You're wearing masks. What's the big deal? That's not a big deal. I'm glad you're wearing masks. No church or wear masks, you know. But riots and revolution and it just, and the press, it, it's a mess, Okay. The Bible says, now listen, the, 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 the person we vote in, 2 Samuel 23, 3 says this. The God of Israel said, the rock of Israel spake to me, he that ruler over men must be just ruling in the fear of God. I'm voting for the person who gravitates closest to the Bible and will allow America to do the same. That's what I'm voting for. And it can affect how we preach the gospel. You know, it's amazing. You know, there's no law saying we can't go door knocking, but yet now we don't because everybody is freaked out by it. You know, you think about that. You know, Satan didn't even have to pass a law on that one. He just freaked everybody out. That's what he does. You know, but God is not the author of fear. And I want to vote for the candidate who is going to do his best or her best to alleviate that. Okay? So... I want to share with you. Now, I want you, if you would, to take your Bible and go to Matthew chapter 11, verse 20. And then you're going to say, what in the world does this verse have anything to do with the election? And I don't have time to go through the whole passage of Scripture, so I'm just going to read parts of it. 
But let me say this, God will upbraid, he will up upbraid, he will punish cities who are wasting what God has given them. Now think about this. Think about what God has done for this country in 200 years. He says, Besida, for if the mighty works which were done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented. That is America. And thou, America, I'm just substituting that word, which are exalted unto heaven, shall be brought down to hell. Riots, looting, buildings burning, police stations being overrun, that is being turned into hell. For if the mighty works which have been done in thee, America, had been done in Sodom, it would have remained until this day. How can God destroy Sodom and Gomorrah and not punish America? This vote, I'm voting for the candidate who is going to gravitate and be as close to the word of God as I can. Okay? And again, none of these candidates are <laughs> Pastor Connor. But I'm not voting for a pastor. Okay? Um, our biggest concern right now is kneeling at a football game. Do I kneel or do I don't not kneel? <laughs> Who cares? Who cares? You know, what bathroom do I use? Well, I think I identify. It's just, it's foolishness. I truly believe that God will hold Americans accountable because of the freedoms that he has given us. Um, and we're wasting them. I really believe that. All right. You vote Christian principles. The Bible says, the wicked, Psalm 917, the wicked shall be turned into hell. And all the nations that forget God. I don't want to vote for a politician who's from whose rhetoric I've watched and listened to is going to allow our nation to be turned into hell. Who's going to forget God? And you know, it doesn't take anything. You know, well, we have our First Amendment right and our Second Amendment right, and I'm getting ahead of myself, but you know, all it takes is a two-thirds of a Senate to, to amend that. You know, there was prohibition, and then the prohibition went away. It takes two-thirds of the Senate to vote that out. You know, we're not just voting for a president. We're voting for senators. Well, not, we're not this, this time around. Um, but we're voting for senators, we're voting for sheriffs and, and Congress, and, and, and all those people have a part in it. Do you know where they stand? Psalm thirty three twelve. blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. This vote, I'm voting for the candidate who I believe is going to bring us closest to that. So, I had a list of all the things I was going to... We're going to talk about things tonight such as, well, number one... Where does a candidate stand on Jesus Christ? Just plain and simple. Christianity. You know, Proverbs 21 says, the king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. Now, I got some quotes that were taken, and I, and I didn't just Google them and just, I, I, I found out where they came from. I have, the, I have the newspaper that quoted them. This candidate says, believe me, if I run and I win, I will be the greatest representative of the Christians they've ever had in a long time. Who do you think said that? I'll, I'll be the greatest at it. He didn't say, I'll be the greatest Christian. He said, I'll be the greatest representative of the Christians they have ever had in a long time. And now this next guy says, this is from the Cincinnati Inquirer, 2005. The next Republican that tells me I'm not religious, I'm going to shove my rosary beads right down their throat. That's the guy I want to vote for. The same man said this. My idea of self, of family, of community, of the wider world comes straight from my religion. It's not so much the Bible. The Beatitudes, the Ten Commandments, the sacraments, or the prayers I learned, it's the culture. So he's saying my idea of self and family comes from culture. Is that the guy we want to vote for? And that was, I'm going to say, um, that was Joe Biden. And the first one was from Donald Trump. This guy says, my faith in Jesus Christ, the God of second chances, who granted us not so much victory as the grace to run a campaign of integrity, will give him the glory first. Pence, uh, Pence Mike Pence. Amen. I'm just saying, you, you look at the rhetoric and what they say, and you Google what they say. Who are you going to vote for? Who is going to stand up for Jesus Christ most? Now, I don't ever suspect the uh, president's going to get up there and but it would be great if a president got up there and said, hey, I, I, folks, in front of this press conference, we just, just want you to know, uh, question, oh, before you ask me your question, I love Jesus Christ. Oh, that would be great. 
But I don't know if we're ever going to see that in our lifetime. Amen. But the, the candidate who gravitates closest to that, and you know he's not going to mess with our freedom to say it. That's the guy I want to vote for. Now, this other candidate grew up attending Hindu temples with her mom. Well, I just said her, so that gives it away. Um, there is no record or claim of Camelia Harris having attended any other church or joined a campus Christian organization until her career turned to politics. And, and, and these are all things that were written. Okay. So what candidate, let me say this, Jesus is the answer to, to our nation's bleeding open wounds. What candidate is going to allow us to gravitate closest to Christ? Number two, what candidate stands simply on religious rights? What is the candidate who will allow us to keep our religious rights? And, and this is biblical. You know, in, in, okay, now think about this. In March of 2020, by government decree, let me do that. Oh, wait. Okay. <laughs> My church was deemed non-essential a non-essential entity by an elected official of the state of Maryland and put us in the same category as movie theaters, nail salons, barber shops, bars, bowling alleys, roller skating rinks, and scary strokes, scary, scary putt-putt golf. We were put in that category by an elected, by one. He didn't even have to get the vote of the Congress or the Senate of the state. He just said it. That's scary. Now, this is the same entity that Jesus Christ died for, even as Christ also um, loved the church and gave himself for it, but I decree it's non-essential. That is why who you vote for is so important. One candidate said, as soon as he's elected, he will shut down everything again. That's some scary talk right there. That quickly. The candidate that you vote for should believe that Christianity is not a non-essential business. Now, we are business in a sense. Jesus says, I'm about my father's business. I mean, we have a business to do. But if you think we're not essential, then you, we have some issues here. If my people, 2 Chronicles 7, 14, we're going to keep this biblical, man. No more of what does Brother Rich think. What does God think? If my people which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, my people, and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, and I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. We hear this so much, blah, blah, blah. It's so true. He's just waiting for his people to call his name. We need to keep this, this election biblical. What candidate, from what you have seen, is most likely to enhance our Christian freedoms? And which candidate would be willing to limit it or remove it altogether because of political correctness or health? All right? Uh, and I already shared that. And, and remember, I, just, I only have just a few minutes, so I can't go all through these. But I do, I have all my notes in a packet if you want them, like 37 pages of notes. And you can have them, okay? Um, number three, where does the candidate stand on the value of human life? Okay, now, I understand I'm talking to the crowd on, on this issue. Do you know what the word abortion means? It means to, to scrap a bad plan. Like a Navy pilot who's flying a mission and both of his engines blow out and, and he is not going to make it, so he, he aborts. Since when does a human life become a bad plan? Since God said, from the womb I have formed thee, talking to Isaiah, I have formed you in the womb. You're not a bad plan. I don't care if you, you come out of the womb with a, with a physical defect. You're the way God created you. Where does the candidate that we're voting for, where does he stand on the value of human life? This candidate says, we are making it harder to get an abortion to end human life. I'm going to just throw human life in there. This candidate said, we are making it harder to end a human life. Now, we want to overturn federal protections and that would su and support a near total ban. Who do you think said that? This president said we will protect a woman's right to choose and fight to keep access to, to, to end a human life. That's Joe Biden. 
and the first guy was Donald Trump. Donald Trump was the first, and you say, well, Brother Rich, you're just simply promoting him. I'm just promoting what I've seen in the facts. I'm promoting what the Word of God says. I'm not going to lie and say that this president said something else if he didn't just to support another guy. I'm telling you what they said, okay? If, if Brother Tim says, I like donuts, hey, I found out Brother Tim likes cheese sandwiches. Where did you get that from? Well, because he said, I like donuts. No, he likes donuts. If he says it, that's all I have to go by. And if a man says that a woman has a right to choose, and I'm not against women's rights. I'm not against that. But the choice started at conception, for the most part. Um, Donald Trump was the first president to attend America's largest annual anti-abortion rally, BBC News. You know, God says in Proverbs 6, 16 and 17, These six things doth the Lord hate, yea, seven are abomination unto him. That's the same as homosexuality. A proud look, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood. You don't get no more innocent than an unexpected little baby in the womb. Dr. Phil, I, I listened to him. I mean, I listened to him stick his foot in his own mouth. Dr. Phil is pro, uh, what's that organization called? Pro, the people that support... Um, Planned Parenthood, thank you. He's a supporter of them. Yet I saw him doing an advertisement for a show, and he was just, just attacking this lady because she does drugs. And she's pregnant. He said this, you don't have the right to take drugs because you are harming that innocent little baby's life in your stomach. Who gives him the right to say that? I've listened to him saying, so you do acknowledge that's an innocent little baby's life in the stomach. You just catch them at their own words, man. That's what you got to do. We got to keep it bi Bible. Because, listen, it's an abomination to God. You know, Leviticus 18, 21 says, And thou shalt not let any of thy seed, that innocent little baby, pass through the fire to Molech, whether it be the scalpel of a surgeon or burning hands of an idol. You kill an innocent baby. You're killing an innocent baby. You know? How can a person, and I've mentioned this many times, but I just can't grasp my hands around this. And if you're a doctor watching this, you need to grasp your hands on this. How can a doctor go to school for eight years to save lives? Trained to save lives. Practicing on, on cadavers and, and dummies and mannequins and, and to save lives. And study to save lives. And endless hours and classes on how to save a life. And then becomes a doctor, goes into the clinic murders a child in the womb, and goes home to his kids and has dinner like nothing happened. You know, the Bible talks about that in Proverbs where it says, the adulterous woman, she eateth and wipeth her mouth and saith, I have done nothing wrong. Because he no longer or she no longer values human life. I'm voting for the president who, who, who will gravitate closest to the word of God and support saving the lives of innocent babies. It's not a matter of a woman's right to choose or a right to... It's, it's a matter of there's a human life. Okay. You know, I have so many other verses on this, but, you know, the, the, thus saith the Lord that made thee and formed thee from the womb. We need to keep the election biblical. Where is the candidate you're going to vote for? Where is his or her view of human life? There you go. All right. And I'll be very brief on this one. Where do the candidates stand on God's view of marriage and marriage relationship? And I'm talking about the, the sodomite agenda. Where is God's view on that? Keep it, keep it biblical. You know, just like evolution now is no longer a thing, it's just what's in school. Well, that's where, hom that's where homosexuality is now. It used to be an issue. Now it's just a thing. Now it's taught. Now it's gone, it's trans it's tr it's gone farther than that. Now it's... it's what bathroom do I use? 30 years ago. Who, who's an old guy in here? No, I'm just kidding. I, I'm just not. Okay, Brother Rich, 40 years ago. Who would ever thought that would be an issue? What bathroom do I use? Well, I'm so confused. What do I identify with? Well, the scruff on your face tells you what you identify with, you maroon. You know? It's just stuff it's confusion and God is not the author of confusion 
Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is an abomination, just like killing an innocent life. You know, and I have so many verses on this. Defile not yourselves, Leviticus 18.24, in any of these things. For in all these things, nations are defiled, which I cast out before you. God will cast out a nation for this. This is one of the three things, of uh, killing a child and, and, and this is something God destroys a nation for. Listen, where does God stand on this? And there's just so much more to that. I remember when, and I remember, you know how the, whole, uh, the Holy Spirit sometimes groans in the spirit? I could say that's what I did. When the day that, that uh, the sodomite marriage thing was passed and the White House was done in rainbow colors, Remember that? I remember getting chills down my spine thinking, oh, Lord, what have we done? And you know who done that? Who you vote for. Because the Supreme Court allowed it five to four, and those were people put in there by the president that was voted for. And I don't care who you are. Every president is going to put in the person of their party and who they like. God bless them. I would too. If I'm a elected president... I'm going to vote, Brother Tim, I don't even care if you're a lawyer. You're going to the Supreme Court. And Miss Karen, you're going with him. Just to make sure he's right. <laughs> and don't say, well, every president's like, well, I will vote. For no, you don't. You, you're going to put in, you know what? I, I, I hope this lady does get this, um, the, the Supreme Court, uh, Miss, what's her last name? Cohen? Mayor Cohen? That lady. You know what? I, at first I thought, you know, no, yes, we need to get her in there. Yes, because every president's going to do that. But it's who you vote that gets to do that. Only the president gets to do that. You know that, right? The highest ranking senator doesn't get to do that. The highest ranking congressman doesn't get to do that. POTUS, he gets to do that. The president of the United States of America. Who you vote for, there you go. Where do, number five, the candidates stand on supporting Israel? Let me say this. <laughs> this is a big one. Let me say emphatically. Um, okay, okay, let me say this. Okay. okay, this is a quote. Let me say emphatically. This is a person saying this. Like the overwhelming majority of my constituents, my Christian faith compels me to cherish the state of Israel. Who do you think said that? Woo. Who said that? Tennis. Donald Trump. Whoa. Donald Trump said that. Donald Trump made that statement. Wow. Yeah. Amen. He'd be surprised. Amen. Amen. Genesis 12, 3 says, and I will bless. No, again, Brother Rich, we know who you're standing for. I'm just going by what people say. If I say I like ho-hos, what is my favorite snack? It's ho-hos. I love ho-hos. Who can tell me what's the one way I do not want to die from listening to me in Sunday school class? Mrs. Bromley. Steamroller. I do not want to be run over to death by a steamroller. You know how she knows that? Because I've said it so... I mean... Yes, ma'am? All right, that's no, not pop tarts. Now we're just getting non-biblical, Okay. But she got that because I talked about it. And you, when you hear a candidate say something over and over again, or what they say and what is recorded, there you go. Genesis 12, 3 says, And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse them that curse thee. You know, that was written over, what, 5,000 years ago? It doesn't change. The word of God, my word is settled in heaven. The candidate I vote for, needs to gravitate closest to that. Not get them together and have a beer with them in, the, in, in, in Cap David. You know, one president got a couple of them together and said, hey, let's have a beer together. You know, one, one president had a, well, and I will bless them that bless thee. And you know what, again, and I understand, and understand, I understand everybody in this room may not agree, and praise God for you. You can, that's the thing about our country, I'm not just voting for a, 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 a party. I really am not. I am voting what the Bible says. All right? If they're unfriendly towards Israel, and I'm not saying that I know of any candidate that is really unfriendly towards Israel, but 
Well, how have they voted in the past? How have they, how have they supported in the past under pressure, not just in the press or in a spotlight, but, but decisions that were made? Find out if they believe that Israel needs to give up their land to Hezbollah. Find out. Um, find out how they feel about Israel. You know, in 2017, President Donald Trump announced the United States recognition of Jerusalem as the capital of Israel and ordered the planning of the relocation of the U.S. Embassy in Israel from Tel Aviv Amen. to Jerusalem. Amen. That's a pretty good thing. Amen. You know Naboth in the Bible? Naboth. You guys know the story of Naboth and his garden? There was a guy in the Bible named Naboth. And he had a garden. And God said, when I give you the land, it's your land. You had to keep that land. Because God gave them certain areas of land. And this King Ahab said, hey Naboth, I want your garden. And you know what Nabal said? No, I'm not going to give you my garden. And Ahab said, well, I'll give you better. I'll give you bigger, better for your garden. He said, no, I can't. This is what God gave me. I've got to keep this. The guy we vote for, the, the candidate we vote for, has to stand with what the Bible says about Israel and their land, every foot of it, every square inch of it. All right? Um, not a president who will broker a deal between Israel and Palestine. Um, America needs to stand behind Israel. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I'm telling you right here. You can, no, don't run me over a steamroller, but just, I'll probably renounce my whatever I say over, no, I'm just kidding. If America turns its back on Israel, you can be rest assured God will turn his back on America. That's just done deal. Number six, I'm going to go a little longer. I'm usually really short when I preach. Okay, so I'm going to go a little longer tonight because it's already 6.30, but that's because they sang long. I'm kidding. That was so good. That was really fantastic. What are the candidates' stand on the United States military? Well, Brother Rich, what has that got to, what has that got to do with anything? Um, Teddy Roosevelt, who is, I don't care what you, he is one of my favorites, man. Teddy Roosevelt was one tough puppy. Teddy Roosevelt got a big bunch of ships together and painted them all white. And he said, I don't want war with anybody, and ain't nobody going to want war with us after this. Okay, now that isn't exactly how he said it, Mrs. Holding. Um, the, he said he, he was not looking for war, but, er, but he took 16 battleships with their escorts and painted the hulls of these ships white. You want to talk about how freaky that must have looked like. And from December of 1907 to February of 1909, those ships went all over the world and pulled into people's harbors and said, Hey, we're America. Just want you to know we're here. Want you to know we're around. Look at what we got. We're not going to attack you. We're not going to mess with you at all. We'll even support you. But I want you to know who we are. I want to vote for a president who's going to be that. Okay? But it goes a little farther than that. I'm not just, I just don't want a military that has lots of tanks and planes and carriers, which we have. I love carriers. Carriers are so cool. Who's been on a carrier? Come on, carrier sailors. <laughs> you hate them when you're on them because you eat terrible food and you work 57 hours a day. But when you get off them, I wish I was on the carrier. No, uh, you know, you see them and you're like, like, you cry. I was on one of those. They're so cool. What was I talking about? Oh, let's go on. All right. I'm not just talking about all that stuff, but I'm talking about a strong military is a godly military, a cohesive military. A president, I have your back, military. You know, if you take your Bible and you go to Joshua chapter 6, verse 1, and we're going to keep this biblical, okay? Jericho, the biggest, baddest city around, was in total lockdown because of the Israel army. Now, Jericho was straightly shut up because the great white fleet was in their port, buddy, because of the children of Israel, because they saw what God could do with the military. Not because of their troops or their spears or their shields, but because they feared God. And a, 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 a harlot, heathen woman was the one telling the spies this. She says in chapter 2, Joshua chapter 2, verse 9, um, and she said unto the men, I know that the Lord hath given you the land and that your terror is fallen upon us. In this day and age, who fears America anymore? 
Who fears our military? You know what our biggest concern is today? Well, do we authorize transgender surgeries or not? That's our concern? How about having... And I've heard Kennedy say, well, we have the best trained. But you have to have cohesiveness. There has to be a fear of God in this thing. And all the inhabitants of the land faint because of you. Who faints because of America anymore? For we have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea when he did come out of Egypt. Verse 11 says, and as soon as we heard these things, our heart did melt. Neither did there remain any more courage in any man because of you, for the Lord your God, he is God. In November, I'm going to vote for the candidate who gravitates closer to that. That's who I'm going to vote for. Which candidate personifies that? And I'm not going to say no names now. But in your mind, which candidate personifies that? Thank you. I didn't have to say it. The president whose vision for our military is that or closest to that is, is the person I'm going to vote for. Deuteronomy 20. When thou comest out, when thou goest out to battle against thine enemies and seest horses and chariots and people more than thou, be not afraid of them. For the Lord thy God is with thee. For the Lord your God is he that goeth with you. I would feel more confident in a president who claims to be saved and whose vice president claims to be saved and is not ashamed of God to be my commander in chief. There you go. And a sub point to this, and I'm so out of time, but law enforcement. <laughs> law enforcement. Why would we vote for a man who would defund a nation's police force? Or he may allude that, well, I wouldn't really, but I, and this is quoted, I would see giving money to help civil causes and take it away from the police. Okay, okay, okay. So I'm going to go into the city of Detroit. Hey, guys, you're in a war, but I'm going to take away 30% of your budget, and I'm going to go open up 17 ping pong ball facilities for our children to play ping pong, and they'll all get along together. And I have swampland in Florida with lollipops and rainbows I'd like to sell you. Why would you do that? God is not the author of confusion. God is the God of, of, of structure and stability, not chaos, not rioting. I want a president who's going to get up and it, it, may, it may lose him some popularity points and says, hey, that's just stupid. Why would we do that? There is a candidate who does that and tweets it. Why would we want a candidate that we're just not sure what he'll do? I don't want that. <laughs> What'd I say? Okay. Is that Mrs. Bromley? Okay, never mind. She's the one who's going to be driving the steamroller. <laughs> Number seven. What are the candidates stand on social welfare, working, and debt? You better keep it biblical. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread. Not in the sweat of pulling out my, my orange free from the government card. Yay! That's actually a credit card. I don't have one of those. You know what's funny, though? I did used to have an orange credit card. And I was embarrassed to use it. I was like, because that's what the color of the card is. What is it called? The freedom card or the independence card or the my taxes go up card? And the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread. That doesn't change. You know, welfare began in 1935 during the Great Depression. Now there are 79 that I know of, 79 government welfare programs that offer food, cash, social services, education, training, and housing, and in some states you can get your nails done. 21.3% of the U.S. population participates in a welfare program. <laughs> and and on, this isn't even including the stimulus from COVID-19. And oh, probably all of us got that check. Who's going to pay for that? You are. I'm going to be dead, and you're going to be paying for it. And you're going to say, Brother Rich warned me, but I'll be dead under a steamroller. <laughs> Keep the election biblical. Slothfulness, slothfulness casteth into a deep sleep, and an idle soul shall suffer hunger. Give me my check. Give me my check. God does not support a slothful, lazy welfare agenda. And neither should the president you vote in. 
you know, if you know Donald Trump, he, he is he is against a lot of that stuff. <laughs> Who's going to pay for it? He also that is slothful in his work is brother to him that is a great waster. The slothful man saith there is a lion without. <laughs> That's kind of funny if you read that. I shall be slain in the street. Brother Tim, I can't go to work. There's a lion out there. He's going to eat me if I go out to go to my job. He's going to eat me. Uh, uh, there's a grizzly bear out there. Right? And there's Proverbs 24, 30, Ecclesiastes 10, 18. It's all in my little packet of notes for you. Tons of them. Tons of verses on being a lazy, no good for nothing. Don't want to work. The soul of the sluggard desireth and hath nothing. But we're poor because you do nothing. Okay. I think you get it. A debtor nation. A debtor nation. How about the, how about the candidate? What? <laughs> Tariffs. The president we have now, man, he is just putting it to people, and that's why they hate him. Tariffs. And, and listen, why would I? Listen, if, if I'm selling flugel binders, right? Who here knows what a flugel binder is? Good. Did you raise your hand? Oh, sorry. <laughs> it's not anything. So I'm making flugel binders, and I'm selling them for seven bucks a piece. Well, that guy, well, I'm picking on Brother Tim too much. Fabian. Fabian. And Fabian's in another country. He's in the country of Djibouti. And that's a real country, by the way. I'm not making that up. Okay. And he says, you know what? I'm going to send my flugel binders to America for $2 a piece. Guess who they're going to buy the flugel binders from? Djibouti boy. <laughs> I'm serious. So you know what? Oh, no, you're not. So President Tim's saying, guess what? I'm, I'm going to make it fair to my hardworking Americans who, who are struggling and trying to survive, and I'm going to put a $5 tariff on that, so you're gonna, they're going to pay the same either or. Why wouldn't you do that? Oh, no man anything. What are we at, like $2 trillion in debt? Exodus 22, if thou at all take thy neighbor's raiment to pledge, thou shalt deliver it unto him by the sun goeth down. All right? Number eight, what's a candidate's view on history? <laughs> and that's biblical. Remove not the ancient landmark. Deuteronomy 19.14, thou shalt not remove thy neighbor's landmark, which they have set of old time. And I have verses on top of this. What president stands with America's rich history. I, I, I ain't standing for that. I'm, I'm kneeling. <laughs> really? That's your biggest problem? Is kneeling at a flag in a football game? What president, what candidate is like, that's ridiculous. And what candidate's like, they have the right to do that. Yes, you have the right to do that. And I have a right to pick my nose. I mean, I always should do it. Remove not the old landmark. Listen, my First Amendment right, who died so I could have that? And how many of them died for my Second Amendment right? Right? What candidate's view on that? And I'm talking, that's core values of America. Core, core values. A man who loathes our American history will have no problem trying to change it. No big deal to me. I don't care. I'll change it. No, not on my watch, you won't. You know, that's a candidate does not, if a candidate does not hold to the fundamental landmarks and tenets of what this nation was built on, he will damage that foundation. Job says in chapter 8 4, I inquire, I pray thee of the former age, and, and prepare thyself to search of their fathers. For we are but of yesterday, and know nothing because our days upon our, our shadow. Shall they not teach thee? Does not George Washington still teach a principle? And Abraham Lincoln still teach a principle? And Thomas Jefferson still teach a principle? Are they not still there written in the history books? That's what I want to vote for. The core tenets of America. And that's biblical. A man who will embrace, a candidate who will embrace our history is one who will continue to carry on the foundational principles on which America was founded. And then lastly, I want to say this, and I want to be very careful, but this is something that needs to be talked about. And usually I get to this point, and I kind of end it, 
their stand on illegal immigration. And it's really simple, really. One of the most issues that affects me the most and is very personal to me is immigration. Because I'll tell you something, I love our Spanish ministry. And I, I would never want to hurt anybody in that. I would never want to say anything unkind. And you don't need to. Because there's one factor in this. Illegal. I'm not against immigration. My grandfather was, <laughs> I almost said the slang word for a German. If, is it wrong if you're something and you use the slang word for it? Yes. It is wrong? Like if I'm 100% German, am I allowed to say the slang? No? Okay. All right. I will not say it. But sometimes we put it on our hot dogs. But I will not say it. Listen, I th I'm, I'm it. Well, I won't say it. Listen. But it's not immigration. It's illegal immigration. And I'm all for immigration. Um, that is a core value of America. But you know, even Ellis Island, when they all came in from Ellis, there still were regulations. There still were rules. There still were protocols. You didn't just come in on a boat, jump off the boat, and, and go to Jersey and oh, open up a, a burrito stand. Or whatever. Listen, let me ask you this question. Brother Sam, I want a better car for my family. My car is broken. I can't make it to work. I got a wife and four kids. I love my family. They're everything to me. But my car isn't starting anymore. I need a better car. I'm going to steal yours. Is that okay? I'm not even Sam's. I'm going to go steal one. It's for a good reason. It's, good. it's not that I really want a better car. But it's not that I want something fancy. I'm going to go steal a minivan. Is that wrong? No, because it's illegal. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 14, 40, let all things be done decently in good order. You know, my, my family, my, my grandfather, came from Deutschland when I was nine years old. I learned German in high school. Great. But there are protocols. And so God gave me this verse. And it kind of changed my whole thinking. You know, I get it. I get immigration. I get it. Um, I empathize. Proverbs 630 says this. Men do not despise a thief if he steal to satisfy his, own, his soul when he is hungry. Nor do men despise a man who crosses the border with his family to feed his children and provide them with a better life. I do not despise that. I do not hate them for that. I get it. I empathize because where their heart is. But the next verse says this. But if he be found, I don't care what your case is, but if he be found, he shall restore sevenfold. He shall give all the substance of his house. If he is caught, no matter how much you sympathize with him, he is still guilty. We get it. We, we sympathize. We empathize with the humanity of it. But it is still illegal. It is still illegal. I'm going to vote for the candidate who is going to set his policy on illegal or not illegal. And I know there's all kinds of stuff in the news, but be careful with the news because you don't see all of it. You see... I just read a report, a lot of children that were separated, a lot of the parents don't even want the children back. That's why they can't reconnect them, because they're gone, and they've connected with them, and they say, no, no, we, we, we can't take them back right now. But you don't hear that. I believe that a great many folks who cross our borders illegally just want to feed their kids. They want to send home money to grandma. They want to work hard. I get that. But without protocol, without guidelines, it becomes chaos. And you know what? Because we've been so smushy on it in the past, a lot of people are getting hurt. A lot of people just, they've been here their whole lives. So we need a president who's going to say, hey, here's the protocol. This is what we're going to do. If it means building a wall or whatever. But it's, you got to vote this. Illegal immigration. That's the stand. That's the hook. I'm voting for the president who's going to stand against illegal immigration. So, my conclusion. Vote. Who in here is 18 years or older? That bit, if you have not already, every one of you needs to be in that line. You say, Brother Rich, I'm just one person. The state of Florida in 2000 was decided by about 500 votes and a guy named Chad, 
who had a dimple. Does anybody know, know, remember that one? Okay, the dimple Chad. I wrote a poem about it, but it's no good anymore because it's 20 years ago. Your vote really does matter. <laughs> it really does matter. And by the way, don't get disillusioned or, well, well one guy's up by 18 points. Uh, the polls say, can I ask you a question? Who in this room has ever been polled? I haven't been polled. Who are they polling? Uh, have anybody here, has anybody come to you and say, hey, I'm doing a national poll. Who are you? I haven't been. So how do we know these polls are correct? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. But you know what? Who, whether it is or it isn't, you vote. That's where the true poll comes from, who votes. Vote biblically. Vote, know the Bible on these things. There's a website called two, uh, uh, Pros and Cons, Bibli uh, Britannica, and it's in that packet. And it shows you 73 cat, and even shows you the Green Party and the Libertarian Party, who they vote for. Okay? I'm not going to explain what they are, because, yeah. Ask God. You know what? I'm just going to say this. Um, I've prayed and I've fasted for this vote, for this election. I hope you have. I hope you've been praying about it. And even though the candidates may not line up completely with all your religious views, who is the one who is going to gravitate closest to the Word of God and allow America to do the same? And that's what we're voting on. Amen? Let's pray. Father God, the heart of the king is in your hands. The heart of the candidate, the president of this nation, the governors we vote for, the, 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 the congressmen, the congresswomen, the senators, the sheriffs, the, the magistrates. God, are, the hearts are in your hand. God, help us as a people of God to vote the things of God. And Lord, with all my soul, I pray for Joe Biden. I pray for Donald Trump. I pray for Mike Pence. I pray for Camilla Harris. I pray for their salvation if they're not saved with all my soul. I pray no ill will, God, for these folks. I have no ill will for any of these folks. For any, anybody on, the, on, the, on the, the political party I'm not for, I have no ill for any of them. I pray, God, for their souls, for the souls of their wives or husbands and children. God, but I pray that you would give us a president, God, who will stand as close to the word of God, who will stand closer to the word of God than anyone else. I pray that, God. And I don't care what the polls say or, or what anything says, God. You're the God of everything. You put a little shepherd boy into the king of the greatest nation of the time, Israel. You took David, a little shepherd boy, and said, here's your new king. And look how great he did and how great his son did. God, you know, some, I don't pray anymore, God, give us what we deserve I don't want to pray that anymore. God, I'm praying for the president, God, who will keep us closest to the things of God. And Father, I love you. I praise you. And Lord, if somebody in here tonight isn't saved, God, I pray that they would walk out of here knowing Jesus Christ as, our, as their Savior. I love you, God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, at this time, would you stand? We're going to do an invitation.